So let's talk more about the available NPSH. As we said before, pump should always be handling liquid only. The least portion of vapor in the fluid can cause pump cavitation. Cavitation can cause noise, erosion, and may even lead to pump impeller damage. So to make sure cavitation wouldn't occur, we should ensure enough available net positive suction head in our calculation. So what is the available NPSH or NPSHA? The available NPSH is the available head at pump suction that indicates probability of vapor or bubble formation. This means that if the NPSHA is enough, then cavitation shouldn't occur and pump can work efficiently. But if it was too low, this can cause cavitation, which can lead to severe pump damage if the pump worked for some time. But how much should be the pump available net positive suction head? Well, this mainly depends on the flow rate and the differential head of the pump. Each pump has its required NPSH or NPSHR. This is specified by pump supplier and it depends on the operating conditions. So the required NPSH or the NPSHR at the rated flow is not the same as the one at 50% of the rated flow. At 50%, the NPSHR would be smaller than the one at the higher flow rate which means less probability of cavitation. In addition, due to increased losses in the system, this means that the available NPSH would be reduced. So as the flow rate increases, the probability of cavitation increases. This means that the NPSH available should be always greater than the required NPSH, and this should even be by a margin. So how much would be this margin? Well, to avoid any process deviation from the NPSHA or from the available net positive suction head, we usually take the margin to be around 10 to 50%, which means that the available net positive suction head should be greater than 1.1 to 1.5 of the required net positive suction head specified by the supplier. So let's see how NPSH calculation works. The net positive suction head depends on the fluid vapor pressure, the static head, which is here, the piping pressure drop, and the strainer or filter pressure drop upstream the pump here. In case this fluid is at its bubble point, this means that its vapor pressure is equal to the operating pressure, or in other words, it's just at the boiling point. The pump net positive suction head will get more critical. In this case, the only factor increasing the net positive suction head will be the fluid static head. So in this case, we may need to increase the elevation of the vessel in order to make sure it can overcome the losses in the pipes or in the strainer and make sure that we have an enough available net positive suction head. So one of these methods is to reduce the piping friction losses. This is not the only method for sure. We can increase the static head. We can decrease the pressure drop in the strainer. Choose so a strainer which can give much less pressure drop. If you like to see examples playing with all these parameters, you can check out the pump hydraulics course. Link is in the description. One of these methods is to increase the pipe size. This can make sure that the losses in the pipe itself is neglected and can enhance the pump net positive suction head. So increasing the static head increases the net positive suction head. Decreasing the friction losses also increases the pump net positive suction head. So if you like to know more about the pipe sizing and pump hydraulics, you can check each course for each of them in a link in the description. You can even check out the 4-in-1 course which combines the pipe sizing, pump hydraulics, compressor operation and control valve hydraulics in one course. And see you in another video.